Hello and thank you very much for finding the time um, to answer some questions for us. If you could start by introducing yourself and tell us what it is that you do and how did your physics degree help you to arrive where you are professionally now? Yeah, so um, I'm Rowan Parnell. I graduated in 2020 with a physics degree from the University of Nottingham. I currently work as an operational researcher for the civil service um, oh. on the civil service fast streams so and graduate development program. Um, operational research is it's it's a very broad topic. It's a very broad topic, but essentially it, it boils down to data analysis and data science and why problem solving and evidencing um, in a way that allows policy policies or changes to policy be, to be made as effective as possible. Yeah. Um, so it's taking a scientific approach to um, policy and decision making. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the scientific principles and ways of setting up experiment and analyzing data they use in physics are used within operational research as well. So modeling and mm -hmm. is obviously a very large part of that, doing predictions and forecasts. Um, and everything and everything through the data analysis and data science all rolls into this. So depending on what job you're doing, you might be doing a lot of different statistical technique or you know things that we would be using in physics as well um, and some roles you might be doing less but it would definitely the reason a lot of physicists do go into this as a career path is the fact that the actual processes line up with your physics degree a lot yeah. right. so what qualities do you think your physics degree equipped you with to choose this profession and be good at this profession and that made you attractive to the employer to hire you as opposed to computer science graduate in mm. um, that's a very good question I think the there's the obvious kind of numerate parts to it where mm. you're, you're doing an analysis and you're looking at equations and mm -hmm. you're coding as well and right. you have to have all of these hard analytical skills which are you know are very universal across the sector but it's really also the problem solving skills as well so being able to mm look at an, at an issue as, as it is and think about the best way to manage your own time and to structure your approach to it and that's right from the analytical side of things and also to the softer skills of you know, managing your time mm -hmm. and I think that the all of the work that we did throughout university led mm -hmm. into that so well that sometimes you don't necessarily you think they might just be you know skills that everybody has or you know need to develop in different ways but the way that you're almost trained to do that as a physicist and trained to approach problems um, is hugely useful mm -hmm. and, and quite unique to physics I think. Great. Um, what other career paths or jobs did you consider while sending applications just making a choice for yourself? I think yeah um, I had a fairly clear idea that I wanted to work in the public sector and I wanted okay. to do something that was going to have some sort of mm -hmm. social impact. I remember that being fairly clear at the beginning, but as the applications went on and I sent off, you know, 14, 15, 16 applications over the year of 2020, 2021, mm -hmm. um, you gradually broaden your horizons further and further. And if, I think originally I wanted to work just in science funding and policy and then it changed mm -hmm. into bringing in data analysis because there's a lot more analysis jobs out there. Now I look at what I'm doing and I think I wouldn't be doing it, anything else. Right. Um, but I think it's great to have a, a goal in mind and it's great to have something that you, mm -hmm. you think is empty, but it's the first job when you, if you're coming out as a, having a first job from university, it's okay to set your sights very broad mm -hmm. and then you can always narrow that down mm -hmm. later into your career. Right. Um, how did you use your time at the university in terms of trying to figure out what you want to do? Did you go to careers fairs? Did you go to careers events? Did you use a llama? Did you do an in internship? Um, I, I didn't use my time effectively at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so I... Okay. How did this idea then uh, generate in your head? I had, I think late on, I suddenly okay. realized I, I had to start applying to jobs and I didn't really have any idea about what kind of direction I wanted to go in. Okay. Um, I, so I knew that I loved science, I knew that I wanted to stay in something that was doing something scientific. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't, I think I didn't, research didn't appeal, didn't necessarily appeal to me at the time. So 
I wanted to find a way that I could stay involved in science to at least some degree while being able to use the skills I learned at university. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> if you think back about your interview for your current job, mm -hmm. what kind of questions were you asked to make a case for yourself? There's a lot of, there's a, there's a set amount of skills. And if you are applying for a job in the civil service, they do have what they call success profiles, which are defined yeah. skills that they want you to have. So you mm -hmm. can, you can, it's a very simple case of reading up what they are mm -hmm. and tailoring your experience or the experiences yeah. you have to those sort of questions. Um, and then analytical, uh, for the analytical work we do, they ask a lot of kind of broad question, problem solving questions, what they say. Um, how, uh, how many tennis balls do they use at Wimbledon? In a year and then you have to speak through your process of how you right. would estimate that number mm -hmm. and try and come up with an answer on the spot mm -hmm. um, uh, which I remember I think we did uh, we did very similar questions uh, in lectures in lectures in second year for like statistical physics where yeah. you just have to take these assumptions and try and get some kind of like broad estimation at the end so we were almost trained for that through the physics degree as well that's a nice example mm -hmm. What kind of backgrounds do your colleagues have? And how do you fit in? What kind of special expertise do you bring? So I work in a, in a team of analysts, mm. but they're analysts, uh, there are four different types of analysts in the civil service. So there are operational researchers, statisticians, yeah. social researchers, and economists. We're okay. all under analysts and tend to work together. So mm -hmm. everyone sort of brings their own specialities, but ultimately support each other in the same way. Mm. I am, I think I'm the only physicist in my immediate team mm -hmm. and so there are often uh, certain techniques that you would use in a physics degree that you might not use in a maths degree or an economics degree mm -hmm. that well, people don't yeah it's just it's coming from a different background whether or not there's something specific that the physics degree taught me that is different that allows me to do different work to them mm -hmm. maybe comes up but I think it's just the fact that everyone will have a different experience getting there and your default ways of solving problems is always going to be a little bit different. Okay. And it's not that one's better than the other, it's just the fact no. that you need that diversity within a team. Thank you. And to wrap up, um, can you think of any tips, advice to the current students or in other words to your younger mm -hmm. self, what you wish you had known back then in terms of helping mm -hmm. you know, this transition from the university into the Employment. I think I would have liked to have started thinking about wanted, what I wanted to do a bit earlier. Not that that would have given me a better direction, it would have just sort of like, as, as I left, it saved a little bit of time in terms of researching yes. and trying to figure that out while I was applying for jobs rather than before I started applying for jobs. I think also the main thing I realised while sending off all these applications is that it is a total numbers game and right. er, most jobs you'll be applying for do have very large numbers of applicants mm -hmm. and you are definitely qualified I think the fact that you've you've come from this university and you have your physics degree you are going to be qualified for the jobs you're going for mm -hmm. it is a it's a probability whether or not you get that job or not right. and so even if you do get many rejections in a row you can still adapt and improve but it is that's part of the statistics and that is not necessarily a comment on you and your uh, ability as a candidate mm -hmm. um, also, it is a skill in itself, so you don't want, if there is a job that you really want, do some other applications first and practice, and then you can fill it once, you, once you're once you more familiar with the processes, then, and you know, how to interview, then you can really, you can get your practice out of the way first on the jobs you don't really want, and then you can apply it to the jobs that you really do want. Oh, that's a very good advice. Well, thank you very much, Ryan. Thank, thank you. you for your time. Pleasure. Thanks.